So this uh, plot that we saw is an amazing confirmation about the fact that we have the essential physics of, of a blast wave, uh, blast, blast wave shock propagation correct. Okay? Uh, the, the, <clears throat> the expectation of, of the theory, uh, which is that um, R should be proportional to T raised to two halves, which is represented by this line, uh, is, is amazingly consistent with the, with, with the data. And there are some interesting, uh, there are some interesting uh, uh, stories about, about the very first uh, nuclear bomb explosion. Uh, <clears throat> about how uh, the great physicist Enrico Fermi uh, made a very quick uh, order of magnitude calculation of, of uh, what the velocity of the shock wave ought to be, right? Even, by, by sta even when he was standing very, very far away from the, fr from the blast site. Obviously, you know, you wouldn't be standing close to the blast site. You would be standing several kilometers, several tens of kilometers away. Uh, and apparently what he did was he, uh, he tore little pieces of paper and as soon as he heard the, the sound of the blast, he just, uh, he, uh, he, he let those pieces of paper just go, yeah. And uh, he made a very quick uh, rough, uh, um, you know, uh, calculation of, of the velocity with which these pieces of paper were, were uh, moving. Okay, and from that he was able to say something about, uh, you see the, the, the velocity would be like something like this, right? So the velocity has, has the energy in it, right? So uh, from the velocity of the piece of paper uh, at, at a certain time, he was able to say something about the energy of the, of, of the, of the original, uh, um, you know, bomb blast, and uh, so you see, this is how this is how uh, uh, it's an amazing uh, you know demonstration of how uh, simple ideas can be used to uh, used to arrive at uh, um, conclusions that are very very important. Okay, uh, of course, his his answer was just rough. Uh, but it was in the right ballpark and for such a simple experiment, uh, it, it proved uh, amazingly useful. And his, his, uh, his uh, uh, rough guess was, uh, you know, uh, confirmed uh, uh, with more accurate uh, measurements uh, later on. Okay, so <clears throat> having now figured out the time evolution of the shock front, uh, uh, which is that our shock is proportional to two halves, uh, sorry, uh, two fifths, uh, T raised to two fifths, we now ask what's behind the front. So you see, the shock has propagated. We need to know what's, uh, how does a shocked gas look like? Why is this? Why is this important? Uh, because all astrophysical observations like this, yeah, like this, like this, all of this is essentially shock gas. All of this. This is In a sense that the shock has passed through the gas and it's heated it, and uh, you know that, that, that that's what's uh, causing the particles to radiate, and that's what we see, right? So we would like to know what's the structure, what's the density structure, what's the velocity structure, what's the pressure structure behind the shock. Okay, this would be the shock front. So behind it, what's the structure, right? So that's what we would like to know, and uh, let's see how, uh, yeah. How, what does the shocked gas look like? Yeah? Okay. Now we have the usual jump conditions for a, sh a strong shock. You remember this from our um, earlier discussion of shocks, uh, the jump conditions for the shock, a strong shock. The one, uh, uh, the subscript one would uh, describe the undisturbed medium, two would be behind the shock or the quote unquote shock medium that we just saw in the beautiful uh, picture. Yeah? So, um, so this would be, this would be the shocked density, and uh, this would be the unshocked density. And we know that for an infinitely strong shock, uh, uh, in other words, um, a strong shock would be. Uh, you remember that the strong shock would be any anything with a, with a Mach number greater than approximately four. 
Okay. Uh, for that, uh, for, for such a strong shock, the ratio of the of the densities is this, and the ratios of, uh, ratio of the of, of the velocity, uh, and this is not the ratio u two over u one. It's it's slightly different. Okay, is two over gamma plus one. Or, or this these can be verified just from you know um, the shock jump conditions that we have derived earlier. Yeah, and I urge you to show this. Uh, it's a simple matter to show. Okay, and the pressure in the unshocked medium is, is related to the uh, speed of the shock in this manner. Okay. All of these are fairly simple straightforward derivations that, that follow in a, in a, in a uh, transparent way. Okay. So, that is that. Yeah. Also, I would like you to show this. Now, you remember we made all these deductions, we made um, uh, th these brilliant deductions, uh, uh, not we, but uh, uh, the people who figured this out, they made these brilliant deductions using these non-dimensionalized variables, right? So, psi, this is what facilitated everything. So, therefore, we now too, we do not want to be working with, with dimensional variables such as, uh, such as density, velocity and so on and so forth and pressure and everything. We would like dimensionless counterparts of the pressure of the, uh, of the density of the velocity all of those. Okay? And so, what are the best ways of doing, uh, doing that? We say, uh, so the, the, the primes would be the dimensionless density and these are dimensional. So, for instance, this, um, this, and this are dimensional, whereas this is dimension less. This is dimension less density. Whatever you see a prime, and 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 when it's of course when it's a when it's a function of the dimensionless um, you know distance psi, it is a dimensionless quantity. And simply from the symbol, you, you should you should uh, figure out it's a dimensionless version of what. In this case, it's a it's a dimensionless. Uh, I put this in 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 quotes because no density is really dimensionless. So, it is like a density. Okay? It is a dimensionless counterpart of the density. Okay? So, this is how I cons construct a dimensionless density. Similarly, yeah, and, and as it turns out, row 2 is related to row 1 in this manner and therefore, you know, uh, this is how the dimensional density at a, at a, at a given radius and a given time is related to the dimensionless density. Okay? All right? Similarly, for the velocity, so this is how the dimensional velocity at a given radius and a given time is related to the dimensionless velocity. Okay, this is this is the dimensionless velocity, and the radius and the time appear here, uh, as would be expected. You everything else is dimensionless. You see, so the the, the dimensions had better be r over t, and that that turns out to be right. Okay, all right, and. Uh, that is how the dimensional pressure is related to the dimensionless pressure. Okay? The reason we are doing all this is because we, we want to work with dimension less variables such as rho, p, u and so on and so forth from now on. And these are the dimension, this is the dimensionless uh, density, dimensionless velocity, dimensionless pressure. So, having related them to the dimensional quantities, we will see how, how they fit into the uh, you know, into the usual conservation equations. Yeah. So, so the dimension. I mean, I, here, I, I, here, all we've done is related the p two to the p one, uh, more appropriately to rho one 
in, in this manner. Okay, right. So the dimensionless variables will be used in the usual conservation equations of mass, momentum, and energy. Right? Mass conservation, the usual, in spherical in in in, in uh, so uh, in spherical geometry, of course. Because why? Because uh, you know the geometry is spherical. The 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 the, we, the whole assumption is that the blast wave is uh, expanding outwards, uh, you know, uh, spherically. Yeah, and momentum conservation we neglect viscosity. Okay, for inverted flows is this. Okay, there's only one. There is only one uh, uh, space variable, and that's R. And uh, so there's a gradient a gradient of pressure. Gravity doesn't matter. Okay, gravity, body forces don't matter anymore. Of course, gravity is very, very important in astrophysics. Let's not get it wrong. But uh, the point is, gravity has already done its job. Okay, uh, it's it's caused gravitational collapse at the very at the at, at at the very center of the exploding star, and so the mass has 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 contracted to such an extent that has increased the density to such an extent that uh, you know uh, it's 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 ignited runaway carbon fusion and 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 uh, because of this runaway reaction there's a thermonuclear explosion and from then on uh, you know uh, it's 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 like a point deposition of that thermonuclear explosion that happened is like a point deposition of of a enormous amount of energy and from then on uh, the fact that there's a massive core doesn't matter anymore in other words, the gravitational attraction of the massive core doesn't matter anymore, and therefore we do not have a term expressing uh, the gravitational force in the momentum conservation equation. Important to keep in mind. Okay, and energy conservation, I would urge you to. It's as if this is an advection equation. So this is kind of a uh, advection equation. advection equation for uh, p over uh, p over for this is what it is okay you see d over dt plus u uh, uh, d over dr so the, the, the this quantity this log p over um, uh, uh, rho raised to gamma this is being advected along uh, with with uh, velocity u and that's the whole point isn't it the energy, and so this would be essentially the, if, especially if you think about a polytropic kind of gas where p equals k times rho raised to gamma log p over rho, this is just that k. And the k doesn't change. That's essentially what the whole adiabatic assumption is. The energy does not change. The energy is simply advected along with the shock uh, uh, with the speed u. That's what the energy conservation uh, equation is telling you. Okay, right. Okay, now. Using the definition of the similarity parameter psi, you remember this, right? This is how psi is related to the dimensional radius r, right? We get, and this is very important, all of this you see here, there's a partial u partial t and there's a partial u partial r. So, in other words, u rho, um, uh, u uh, rho. P, all of these are functions of R and T, hence the partial derivatives. Okay, when you differentiate with respect to R, you hold T constant. Uh, when you're differentiating with respect to T, for instance, here you hold R constant. That's why you have these partial derivatives. So now, using this dimensionless variable, you see the dimensionless variable is a is 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 a. Um, a let me write this again u for instance u or for that matter density and pressure all of those are functions of both r and t okay and so is psi psi is also a function of r and t in this particular combination therefore what happens is a partial over partial t would be something like this okay so this is a partial derivative Whereas, what is this? This is a 
straight derivative, not a partial one. Okay, and this is something that I want you to think about very carefully. Similarly, and, and this, this just follows from here, follows directly from here. Okay, yeah, so you, you could stick a u here, you could stick a p here, you could stick anything here. So if you, if you had d partial u partial t, you would have a d u d xi. If you had a partial p partial t, you would have a d p d xi, so on and so forth. And this follows directly from here. Similarly, a d over dr, the partial over partial r is this. Again, this is a partial derivative, whereas this is a straight derivative. Now, what are we getting at? We're getting at, so we now have derivatives only in psi, not in r and t. Okay, not, I should say, not a partial derivatives in r and t. We have straight derivatives or this kind of straight d's in only in psi and not partial in r and t, but it gets better. In terms of, this is a lot of stuff, in terms of these non-dimensional variables, rho prime, u prime, and so on and so forth. And these, 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 uh, the, uh, these straight u derivatives, okay, the conservation equations are, so this mass conservation equation, this guy, it translates, uh, this guy essentially translates to this. Okay, so, um, This is mass conservation in terms of rho prime and u prime and the partial derivatives with respect to time and, 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 and space have disappeared and they are replaced by straight derivatives with respect to the non-dimensional variable xi. Okay, and this would be momentum conservation and this would be energy conservation. Okay. Now, the main thing to, to, to note here, this is not just to give you a whole bunch of mathematics, but the main thing to note here is that earlier you had a set of coupled PDEs, these three where uh, coupled partial differential equations, PDEs, whereas now the very same thing, okay, you have coupled ordinary differential equations. And there's a big simplification arising, of course, from the assumption that the expansion and everything is self-similar, admittedly. Okay, so you have coupled ordinary differential equations and what's the big advantage? With ODEs, the number of boundary conditions goes down. We, as we all know, it's much easier to solve an ordinary differential equation than uh, partial differential equations. By, by, by extension, it's much easier to solve a set of coupled ordinary differential equations coupled ODEs than it is to solve a set of coupled PDEs. Okay. In reality, one really should be solving the set of coupled PDEs, but if it's possible to make some reasonable assumptions about self-similarity or whatever, if it's po possible to play a few mathematical games, then the, the price of those, uh, uh, you know, making those assumptions hugely borne out by this huge simplification. The fact that you now arrive at a system of coupled ODEs rather than a system of coupled PDEs, which are much simpler to solve. So this is the final thing, right? And one can solve this and find solutions for 
the shocked gas what the uh, you know uh, how the medium behind the shock shock looks like and instead so so this is what i was just saying instead of the coupled pdes we started out with we have ended up with coupled odes so, and this is a consequence this is a consequence of self similarity and this is something i'd like you to keep in mind um, uh, as you go ahead you will encounter other situations where you will be using self similar rate variables and this is one of the, uh, you you can think in mathematical terms you can think of the motivation as just this uh, I, I, I try to choose a clever self similar variable for instance something like x minus vt I call this something some some uh, I don't know some zeta right I, 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 I start working in terms of this sub similarity variable so that I won't have to now uh, you know uh, uh, work in terms of partial variables with respect to x and partial variables with respect to t maybe if I choose a clever combination of, 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 of uh, you know x and t in this case this and in, 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 in case of uh, you know uh, this particular problem it was something else it was another combination of r and t but nonetheless it was cleverly chosen so that the set of coupled PDEs reduces to a set of coupled ODEs and that is a big simplification ok. Now the boundary conditions for solving uh, so for solving these coupled ODEs are let us just say that at, at, at some reference psi naught ok the non-dimensional density velocity and pressure are all set equal to 1. Anyway we are non-dimensionalizing these are all non-dimensional quantities in, in order to get the dimensional quantities we would have to uh, we would have to multiply with appropriate normalizations ok. So the actual values will be taken care of by those normalizations for simplicity we take the non-dimensional non condition uh, the non-dimensional boundary conditions to be just all equal to 1 ok that makes things simple right where of course psi naught is a shock location at the shock location all of these are equal to 1 and this is how the solution to this this set of coupled ODEs looks like ok. So uh, the x axis is the dimensional variable over psi naught ok and this the, the, this, the y axis is essentially uh, rho prime uh, u prime and p prime all of these. So this represents p prime this represents rho prime and this is u prime and the shock location is here. Okay, so the, uh, this is psi over psi naught, and psi over psi naught is equal to one, which means that this is where the shock location is. So behind the shock, this is how the pressure varies. The pressure decreases in this manner. Yeah, the density decreases like so, and beyond a point, it it flattens out. The velocity keeps decreasing. Okay, so this is how you know the shocked medium looks the shock is propagating into the interstellar medium like so it's going ahead what does the shocked gas look like what is the density velocity pressure and other things in the gas that has been subject to it to the shock what does it look like it looks like this the density looks like this the pressure looks like this and the velocity looks like this okay given these you can put this into a maybe a radiative transfer code or something and, and try to figure out uh, for, uh, say from the, from, the uh, from the pressure and the density you can try to figure out the temperature of the shock medium and uh, from the temperature you can say something about assuming of course if you make the assumption uh, that, that the radiating gas is a black body uh, you can say something about what, re what regions of, of the spectrum it will be radiating in and so on and so forth. So you can make lots of interesting deductions about the, the shocked medium about the medium that has been subjected to the shock in other words all of this stuff ok. So uh, the graph that I just showed you tells you the structure of the density of the pressure and velocity and everything inside from here backwards 
And having known that, one can put that into other radiation processes uh, considerations in order to see uh, what to expect of, of, of the emitted radiation and this is the actual observation and you confront the observation with, with the expectations of, 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 uh, from the theory and uh, try to see if we have an accurate uh, depiction of what is going on. So, you see uh, this was uh, you know an illustration of uh, uh, how fluid dynamics, uh, fairly simple uh, fluid dynamics ideas are um, uh, used to attack uh, a grand problem uh, such as uh, supernova explosions. So, we will stop here for the time being, thank you.